This baby-faced psycho is Alexei Milchikov, the founder of Task Force Rusik. He is an extremely sick and unpleasant person who filmed himself torturing and decapitating a puppy in 2011. In a video in 2020 he said the following, I'm not going to go deep and say, I'm a nationalist, a patriot, an imperialist, and so forth. I'll say it outright, I'm a Nazi. He is also reputed to have cut the ears off Ukrainian corpses and scratched swastikas on their faces. He took part in the partisan paramilitary training program at the Novorossiya Aid Coordination Center run by the Imperial Legion, a combat arm of the Russian Imperial Movement, which itself is a Russian ultranationalist, white supremacist, paramilitary organization. So yes, this is not the guy you invite over for tea, unless you plan on poisoning it. But he is just one man, and his unit is chock full of murderers and killers, all with an extreme right wing nationalist mentality. Before we continue, please drop a like, subscribe, and comment. We need your input, so please do comment. Right, let's get into it. Formed in 2009 by Milchikov, the sabotage assault reconnaissance group Rusik is a pro Russian neo Nazi group that took part in the war in Donbass from June 2014 to July 2015 on the side of the self proclaimed republics, and in the Russian invasion of Ukraine as part of the Russian army. The group's name comes from a combination of Rus and Sich. The Rus were the pre imperial confederation of Norse peoples who hailed originally from Sweden and settled the territory that lies between the Baltic and Black Sea effectively the early Russian people. Sich is in reference to a medieval fortress. Also, Milchikov served in the Airborne Troops VDV, fought with the Spetna's 7th Squad who eerily had the very similar moniker of Rosik. The unit consists of nationalist Rodnovers and volunteers from Russia and Europe, it operates as a closed collective and as it is packed with ex-soldiers it takes care of its own combat training. So, what is a Rodnover, you may be asking? They are practicers of Rodnovery, which is a modern pagan-based religion. Classified as a new religious movement, its practitioners look to the historical belief systems of the Slavic peoples of Central and Eastern Europe. A significant portion of them have extreme right-wing nationalist views, including those who are neo-Nazi and openly inspired by Nazi Germany. Some blame many of the world's problems on the mixing of ethnic groups, and demand ethnic purity, promoting ideas of racial segregation, and demanding the legal prohibition of mixed-race marriages. Some regard ethnic minorities living in Slavic countries as a cause of social injustice, and some Russian Rodnovers encourage the expulsion from Russia of those they regard as aliens, namely those who are Jewish or have ethnic origins in the Caucasus, an approach which could require ethnic cleansing. They are openly anti-Semite, a category which for them means not only anti-Jewish but more broadly anti-Asian, anti-Christian and anti-Islamic. They believe in conspiracy theories claiming that Jews and Asians control the economic and political elite. Now stop for a second. Do you see how strongly the Nazi ideology intertwines with the very religious beliefs of the soldiers within Rusik? To these people being a Nazi isn't just a way of life, it's their damn religion. There has been a long-held belief that Rusik was a part of Wagner Group, this was due to the possible connection between Milchikov, and the nominal commander of the Wagner Group Dmitry Utkin who both served in the 76th Guards Air Assault Division of the Airborne Forces. This has never been confirmed and even Wagner would find it difficult to control Rusik, it may be worth their while to help fund the group especially if they can align their goals, like in Ukraine and Syria. The actions of Rusik significantly impact on the morale of their enemies and there is a level of plausible deniability for Wagner and the government. Most importantly, there is significant crossover in their right-wing beliefs between the two groups. Dmitry Utkin the original founder of Wagner is a neo-Nazi and has often been seen with Nazi memorabilia and having had tattooed SS insignia to his body. The unit has been involved in Ukraine since 2014 where Rusik fought alongside the Russian separatist commander Lt. Col. Alexander Batman Bednov until he was killed in an ambush. They also participated in various battles including Luhansk Airport, near the city of Shkastia, 
in the assault on the village of Kryashuvate and in the occupation of the villages of Hir Hivka, Velika Verhunka, Luduhain. As an example of their international appeal, at least one of the members of the Polish neo-Nazi group Zadruga fought as part of this unit and Jan Petrovsky, whilst initially from Russia, obtained citizenship from Norway but was later deported due to his extremist associations with the Sons of Odin group. He is now second in command of the unit. Rusik was responsible for the destruction of the column of the Ukrainian Adar Battalion near the villages of Medalist and Svitny Pizki in the Luhansk Oblast on September 5, 2014, after a truce was supposed to go into effect. A detachment of Rusik and RRT Batman set up an ambush on the highway and attacked the retreating Adar. Part of the second company of Adar was ambushed by Russian special forces. It was during this attack that Milchikov committed atrocities to the bodies of the dead Ukrainians. On 6 September, intelligence reported that between 20 to 29 fighters of Adar were killed in the ambush. In the fall of 2014, Rusik took part in the battles at the Donetsk International Airport along with the Sparta and Somali battalions. In 2015 after the death of Batman Bednov, the leadership of Rusik would have a major falling out with the Luhansk People's Republic and would move across to the Donetsk People's Republic. They would operate from there before completely withdrawing from Ukraine in mid-2015. Like the Nazis, Milchikov engaged in combat training of teenagers in special camps in Russia. He understood that his beliefs and values needed to be taught and indoctrinated from an early age. This training was for a youth army established by Putin himself. This was done in conjunction with other right-wing radicals from the ENOT Corporation, a once lavishly funded private military corporation, that eventually fell afoul of government but not for their extreme actions, but rather for corruption. Please remember that in Russia, if you get arrested for corruption it's because you didn't pay the right person, not because they care about your criminal activity. Rusik would reappear in 2017 in Syria where they were busy with protecting state-owned and Russian-financed oil and gas infrastructure near Palmyra, Syria. It was during this time that a famous photo was taken of Yen Petrovsky, giving a Nazi salute outside the Pomeranian ruins. They would develop an extremely brutal reputation in Syria, where they generally considered the Arab people as subhuman and treated them as such. They would eventually be transferred back to Ukraine in April 2022, where they were initially sighted near the village of Pletinevka and later in Kherson. Since arriving back, the group has openly called for the destruction of prisoners on the spot. It goes on to add that captives should not be reported to Russian authorities so that they do not form part of prisoner swaps. In recent example of their depravity, their spokesperson, Yevgeny Topaz Raskazov, who looks like a buck tooth, pimply teenage loser, who is in desperate need of a beat down, had this to say about how he feels when he kills. When you kill a pig, a Ukrainian soldier, you take pleasure in knowing you made woman a widow. You take pleasure in knowing that you made his family cry. You get an erection. These are not nice people. Recently they have put out a call to sympathizers to submit intelligence on border and military activity in Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, which of course came as a major warning signal to the West about their possible intentions regarding a false flag or lone wolf type attack. This has come at a time when insiders claim the group is highly disillusioned with the progress of the war. Re-enter the very same goofy-faced teenager, Topaz Raskazov. On his private, telegram page he let fly about his dissatisfaction regarding the current Russian war effort. This came hot on the heels of the devastating Imar's attack on a Russian base in Makievka. Now some of what I am about to tell you may seem haphazard and not the best English, I have tried to keep as close to how it was translated, as possible. I don't want people saying that I doctored his message. In his post, he speaks of rampant drunkenness and a complete lack of at least some security measures, not to mention a failure to counteract enemy sabotage activities. The Russian attack is being sabotaged by fake battles where mobilized troops simulated a combat mission over the radio from a safe shelter with all the resulting shouts of victory and panicked screams. 
experienced superiors who would put a stop to it were absent because according to him some fabulous idiot decided to staff very important areas only with mobilized people. This point confirms something Dark History said a previous video where we addressed the lack of a military corps and the discipline it brings. He went on to add that there is a serious lack of motivation. Many soldiers are not behind the war against the Ukrainians. The Russian military did not give the recruits any reason to why Russia needed to denazify fraternal Ukraine and go to war with them. Yesterday's Factory workers have no idea what the abstract terms denazification and demilitarization of Ukraine mean. When it comes to artillery, the supply problem is going from serious to critical, he warns. Ukraine could achieve dominance of artillery at the front. That would be fatal because all of the Russian successes were due to the superiority of the artillery. In terms of losses, he believes there is a lack of soldiers, up to four-fifths of the fighters on the Russian side could not be deployed, 70 to 80 percent of the soldiers drafted turned out to be unfit to fight, if yesterday's cashier from the grocery store was driven across the training ground in a tank for two weeks, then he's not a good tank driver. The part we enjoyed the most about this rather outburst is that it has confirmed numerous points we have put across in our videos. This outburst may have been very unusual in the Russian military, but Russic plays to its own tune. Milchikov and Petrovsky were subsequently sanctioned by Canada, Britain, the European Union and the United States. They would also undoubtedly be imprisoned and tried for war crimes if they were ever captured. Although cowards like these would undoubtedly take the easy way out if needed. Whilst I have focused on their depravity and their unrelenting belief in some of the evilest ideologies in the history of man, but what we cannot deny, is that they are actually very effective soldiers, which I guess is not a surprise given their makeup, self-confidence and experience. They have taken this ability into Ukraine where they have assisted with training some of the mobilized Russians. In conclusion, Dark Histories firmly believes that by using Rusik in any capacity and not immediately having them arrested and imprisoned, Putin has been shown to condone Nazism in such a heinous form as to be far closer to the original bad guys than Azov could ever hope to be.